Hey there, fourth graders. I'm bringing to you a little lesson about what we've been working on this week. We've been diving into a piece called Shuffle Back and Forth. It's on page 14 in your book. It's right after a new note, F sharp, which is second finger here for violin. Second finger, F sharp for viola as well. Third finger on cello. And fourth finger on the bu -bu 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 bass. This piece, shuffle back and forth, goes between F sharp and E. F sharp, F sharp, E, E. F sharp, F sharp, E, rest. F sharp, E, F sharp, E, F sharp, E, D, rest. Now for viola. On viola, shuffle back and forth. F sharp, F sharp, E, E. F sharp, F sharp, E, rest. F sharp E, F sharp E, F sharp E, D rest. On the cello. F sharp, F sharp E, E, F sharp, F sharp E, F sharp E, F sharp E, F sharp E, D rest. On the bass. F sharp, F sharp E, E, F sharp, F sharp E, rest. F sharp E, F sharp E, F sharp E, D, R. I just played it for you that way so that you can see my fingers moving clearly. But when you're a violin player and playing it here on, on the shoulder with good position and good posture, we're going to remember to check our four points. Elbow, straight arm, wrist, fingertops, fingernails facing you, fingers on the tips. I think that was more than four things, but it's basically four things. Now, when we play this, what you want to practice first is moving between the two fingers. And sometimes we don't feel like doing it on the string because it's a little tough on our fingertips. So do it here on the shoulder. F sharp, F sharp, E, E, F sharp, F sharp, E. Or on the back of your instrument. F sharp, E, F sharp, E, F sharp, E, D. You can do it on your leg in class. Just keep it quiet. F sharp, F sharp, E, E. And that's a good way to practice going between the two fingers. If you're a cello player, though, not only do you have to move your second finger down when you play F sharp, but you have to bring your third finger with it. So we cello players practice moving two fingers as if they're one. So just practice going between all three fingers down and lifting up two, three. You can practice it here, too. It's good practice for the tips of your fingers. F sharp E, F sharp E, F sharp E, D, no fingers. Same goes for the bass. F sharp, F sharp E, moving between all four fingers down to just the first finger, and then no fingers. You can practice it here too. Two, three, four. Try to get them down at the same time, as if they're all trying to cross the finish line at the same moment. You can practice this anywhere. Practice it on your head, practice it on your shoulder, on your leg, on your desk, as long as it's quiet. Now, last thing, playing through shuffle back and forth all at once can sometimes feel like too much to do. So I say, take those four measures and break it down either into two measures and two measures, or break it all the way down to one measure at a time. Here's how that might work. I start off on measure one. I read the notes first. F sharp, F sharp, E, E. Then I think, what's the finger number? Well, F sharp is my second finger if I play violin or viola. Two, two, one, one. And then I practice moving those fingers in that pattern. Two, two, one, one. I did that to show you, you should do it here. Two, two, one, one. For a viola player, it's just a different string. Same fingering, though. Two, two, one, one. From now on, in your left hand, you're going to start calling this first finger, second finger, third finger, fourth finger, thumb. Not the fifth finger. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All right? After you do measure one, play it. Did I do it well? Good, repeat my success. Let's do it four more times. 
shake out fingers, make them like jelly in between. I've got two more to go, right? Are you keeping track? Sometimes I like to get out of my chair, take a little break in between each repetition, just to keep things fresh. There's next. Got measure one figured out. What's next? Let's go on to measure two. F sharp, F sharp, E, rest. Well, that's pretty easy. Maybe I need to practice it though. So I practice just the left hand. F sharp, F sharp, E. That's once. Let's do it two, three, four, five more times. Here's what I say. Three is okay. Five is good. 10 is great, 20 is legendary, 50 is amazing, and on and on. The more you practice, the better you get. As long as your practice is good, make sure our arms are looking good, our plucking fingers are ready to go. Okay. Just finished measure one and measure two. We've got two choices now. We could go on to measure three, or we could put measure one and two together. If you're one of those that puts measure one and two together, that's fine. So try measure one and two all the way through. F sharp, F sharp, E, E, F sharp, F sharp, E. If you did well, repeat your success two, three, four, five different times or more. You could also choose to go on to measure three and come back to measure one and two later. So measure three is the one measure where all the fingers move every measure. F sharp, E, F sharp, E. I would definitely practice that several times. F sharp E, 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 F sharp E. Now that I feel good about measure three, I'm going on to measure four, which I wrote up here on the board. F sharp, E, D. That's this one over here for bass. F sharp, E, D, four, one, zero. Or if I'm a cello player, three, one, zero, three, one, oh. Or if I'm a viola player, three, two, one, zero. Rest. Try again. Two, one, open D. Or from a violin player. Two, one, D. Two, whoops. Two, one, D. Two, one, D. Huh, that's starting to sound like a piece I know. Now that you've gotten through the whole piece, either one measure at a time or two measures at a time, it's time to put two measures and two measures together. And once you've got that, then you can put measure one and two together with measure three and four and play the whole piece. So those are my practice hints for you. If playing the whole piece is too tough at first, do two measures at a time. If that's too tough, do one measure at a time. Once you've got one measure and one measure, you can make two. Once you've got two and two, then you can make four. And when our pieces get longer, that's a good way to practice too. You can learn any piece of music this way by just going to the smallest part of the piece and going one measure at a time. Good luck with your practice this week. Remember, you only have to practice on the days that you breathe. And we're doing a practice challenge this month in December. Practice 10 days and you'll get your name on the wall with a star and a wacko eraser in the shape of an animal or a piece of food. We'll see. Good luck, everybody. Bye.